Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's session, I am going to talk about Anglo-Norman period. Before getting into the session, kindly do subscribe my YouTube channel so that you will get all the updates. The Anglo-Norman period or Middle English period or, or you know it can be also known as Anglo-French and this period gets started from 1066 onwards, 1066 onwards, where the word Norman came from, Norman conquest. William the Conqueror, King William, King William the Conqueror, he was Duke of a country called Normandy, N-O-R M A N D Y Normandy. Normandy is a country in France. So Norman means France. Norman dialect, French dialect, French. So William was a duke of the country called Normandy in France. So William the Conqueror who came to England and defeated uh, King Harold of England and he imposed his cultures and his own administration in England. See King Edward, uh, he was the last king, king of Anglo-Saxon. Uh, period anglo-saxon period so uh, prior to 1066 it was anglo-saxon age so king edward was the uh, last king of uh, the period called anglo-saxon when king edward uh, he was in the uh, deathbed he announced Harold as his successor. After the King Edward, Harold will be the king. He will be, you know, uh, ruling the country England. It was on January 5th of 1066. The very next day, King Harold uh, took the charge as a king of England. However, King Harold's position was compromised. Why? Because since he had uh, sworn an oath in 1064 in the presence of William the Conqueror, saying that uh, he will defend William right to the throne he gave the promise in 1064 he gave the promise in the presence of William the Conqueror that he will defend the Williams right to the throne see soon after from uh, Harold's reign uh, Harold has to face a lot of challenges to his authority there was a person called Tostig Tostig and uh, his brother Harold the third Harold King is different and Harold the third who is different person so Tosti and his brother Harold the third they started you know raiding the southern and eastern coastal area of England during May during the month of May see Harold was able to keep his you know militia on guard throughout the summer okay uh, King Harold he was able to you know uh, keep his military forces with him uh, during the uh, summer season but uh, end of summer season you know he was uh, left without supplies he ran out of supplies for his soldiers so he sent his soldiers uh, for, for harvestings he sent his soldiers you know for, for harvesting in the early september so before sending his soldiers for harvesting he had a battle uh, uh, with uh, Harold the third and uh, Tostig because uh, uh, Harold the Harold H A R E L D Harold the third and Tostig they invaded the north part of you know coastal area in England. So King Harold was very angry and he hastened to you you know give a rush to Yashkai and where uh, in the place called Stamford Bridge. Okay, it was about you know uh, 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 in, in the place called you know Stamford Bridge in which he smashed them. He beaten them. He beaten both of them. He beaten Harold the Third and Tostig. These two were perished. So meanwhile, what happened? William the Conqueror. He was making plan uh, to you know uh, conquer England. He is a small you know duke from uh, Normandy country which located in French right. So he is you know looking for the right chance to capture England on the continent. Meanwhile, on the continent, what William made, uh, he slowly secured the support for his invasion from both the Norman aristocracy and the papacy. He slowly, you know, gaining the support from these two. Around uh, in the month of August uh, 1066, he had assembled a force of 4,000 to 7,000 knights, soldiers, foot soldiers, cavalries, infantries. But around, you know, for uh, next four weeks, he couldn't transfer uh, his forces to the next level, to the next places. And he was waiting for the right chance. William the Conqueror was waiting for the right chance to beat King Harold. Finally, around, you know, uh, uh, in the end of September, Okay. The Herald was uh, occupied in the north. Herald was occupied in the north. The winds changed. William crossed the channel immediately. William, you know, was very hurry and he has gone towards uh, 
Harold. There he landed in a place called Pevinse, P E V E N S E Y, Pevinse, the uh, September 28, and moved directly to Hastings. Hastings is a place where the battle was occurred, Hastings, between uh, King Harold and William the Conqueror. Harold, he was, you know, he got the news that uh, King William is coming against him for the fight, for the battle. Harold was, you know, hurrying southward without with about you know seven thousand soldiers, he was coming with about you know seven thousand soldiers, seven thousand men, and reached Hastings on thirteenth of October. But he was surprised by he was you know completely shocked and seeing the William the Conqueror who already arrived on the spot. So William the Conqueror who already arrived on the so uh, spot, you know, he fixed a lot of you know tricks over there. He was waiting for the fight. There. Harold was beaten. October 14, Harold was beaten and William the Conqueror who invaded England, who captured the country England. So this is how William the Conqueror, you know, who captured England. Now let's see what is the result, what happened uh, after William the Conqueror captured England, uh, the consequences of conquest, Norman conquest. Of course, there was lot of there were a lot of changes in the uh, uh, England, uh, in the political terms, uh, uh, in the in the administration, in the uh, linguistic usage. William's victory, William the Conqueror, you know, his, his victory, his success, you know, which destroyed England's links with Scandinavia initially. Okay, between uh, the, the connection between England. As Scandinavia got destroyed, bringing the country instead into close contact with the continent. William the Conqueror, he brought the country close to the continent, especially uh, France. He was, you know, uh, closing England with France. Inside England, the most radical change was the introduction of, you know, land tenure and military service which William made. While tenure of land in return for services had existed in England before the conquest, William revolutionized the upper ranks of English society by dividing the country among about 180 Norman tenants in chief and innumerable mesne. Mesne means you know, intermediate tenants. All holding their holding their fees by night service. So the result, the almost total replacement of English aristocracy with a Norman one, was paralleled by similar changes of personnel among the upper clergy and administrative officers. So now the Norman dialects were you know entered, that was imposed at every part of administrative of administration of England, the Norman dialect, which is the French dialect. Anglo-Saxon England had developed a highly organized central and local government and an effective judicial system. And of course, all these were retained and utilized by William the Conqueror. William. See, the coronation promise of uh, William the Conqueror proclaimed his intention of continuing in English in the English royal tradition. The old administrative divisions were not superseded by the new relief. The old administrative divisions were not superseded by the new uh, laws. See, a common law was uh, continued in the court of the king and his administration uh, in England. Innovations uh, included the new uh, but restricted body of uh, forest law and the introduction in criminal cases of a Norman trial by combat uh, alongside the old Saxon ordeals. 
and the increasing use was made of the inquest procedures the sworn testimony of uh, neighbors both for administrative purposes and in judicial cases a major change was uh, william's removal of uh, ecclesiastical cases uh, from secular courts which permitted the subsequent introduction into england of the rapidly growing canon law william also transformed uh, the structure and character of uh, the church in england he transformed he made the changes in the uh, structure and character of the church in england he replaced uh, all the anglo saxon bishops except wulfstan of uh, dorchester wulfstan w u l f s t a n except you know this bishops you know he he replaced all uh, anglo saxon bishops with uh, norman bishops most notably he secured the uh, deposition of uh, stigna stigan most notably he secured the uh, deep position of uh, stigand the archbishop of uh, canterbury uh, who held his see who held his see irregularly and had probably been uh, excommunicated by pope leo il 9 and appointed in his place uh, lanfranc of beck is a, a respected scholar and one of william's close advisers seeking to impose a more uh, orderly structure on the english uh, episcopacy the king supported lanfranc's claims for the primacy of canterbury in english church william also uh, presided over a number of church councils which were held far more frequently than under his predecessors and introduced you know legislation against uh, simony uh, it, it is like you know the selling of uh, clerical offices and clerical marriage he is supporter of monastic reform while uh, duke of uh, normandy he is supporter of uh, monastic reform while uh, duke of normandy a uh, william introduced the latest reforming trends to england by replacing anglo saxons uh, abodes with norman ones and by importing numerous monks he imported a lot of monks into england although he founded only a small number of uh, monasteries including battle abbey uh, this he made uh, to honor his uh, victory place called hastings uh, william's other measures you know contributed to the quickening of monastic life in england so that's it about uh, norman conquest period and the consequences uh, of uh, this period which was made by the william conqueror after he uh, take over uh, the charge of england he became the king of england so in the next session we'll see some important works which were appeared in the period called norman conquest